When they were discovered more than a decade ago, it was thought that stem cells could fix the damaged cells of countless diseases, Parkinson's, diabetes, ALS. That's what's driven George Daly. Thinking about the potential that this has for changing the way that we not only study disease, but one day treat disease is really very, very exciting. But there's a problem. Stem cells, for the most part, come from human embryos, from that time just after sperm meets egg, when we're made up of just a few dozen cells, and the function of those cells has yet to be determined. The main source for the embryos are IVF clinics, where surplus embryos are often discarded as medical waste. Still, harvesting the stem cells destroys the embryo, and for many, that's morally wrong. Others believe that holding back medical progress is also wrong. But in 2007, some experiments were conducted that many believe will finally bring the fighting to an end. Japanese researcher Shinya Yamanaka figured out a way to take an ordinary skin cell from an adult, turn back its genetic clock, and transform it into the equivalent of an embryonic stem cell. No embryos required. Ironically, Yamanaka had to use embryonic stem cells in order to find a way to do without them. He started by exploring one of their fundamental properties. Virtually every cell in the human body has the same DNA. Heart cells, liver cells, skin cells, all share the same 20,000 genes. During our development as embryos, though, different genes in different cells get switched on and off in different ways, and that's what creates all the different types of cells in our bodies. It's called cell programming. Yamanaka believed if he could find the gene switches responsible for programming stem cells, he could flip those same switches in adult cells, like skin cells, and reprogram them back to the moment before their destinies were determined. Each cell has at least 20,000 genes. So that means we have to find those important switches from the 20,000 candidates. With so many genes to choose from, so many potential combinations, the search could have been infinitely complex. Yamanaka's insight was to appreciate that it was a very limited set of genes, and he set out to identify them. First, he reduced 20,000 possible gene candidates down to 100 using online databases. But then, the work got harder. We spent like three years to study the function of those 100 genes. Were there people saying, give up, there's, there, there's no, no use in this? Yeah, many people told me that this is going to be very difficult. <laughs> you will fail. Using specially engineered mice called knockouts, he tested each gene's ability to make pluripotent stem cells eliminating them one by one. After more than three years culturing hundreds of thousands of cells, Yamanaka narrowed the gene pool down to 24 genes, and finally four. Then came the moment of truth, getting these four painstakingly selected genes to make stem cells. He took some skin cells from an adult mouse, then used a virus to insert the four genes inside them. Two weeks later, the skin cells in the Petri dish had completely transformed. We saw cells which looked like stem cells. So it was the moment, you know, we were very, very excited and we were very surprised. Yamanaka dubbed the cells induced pluripotent stem cells or IPS cells and found they were virtually indistinguishable from embryonic stem cells. Creating stem cells without an embryo in mice certainly made headlines in the scientific community. But less than a year later came the news that caught the world's attention. Based on Yamanaka's work, three independent scientists transformed human skin cells into IPS stem cells. It was a monumental breakthrough. What's really remarkable is that just simply putting those genes into the cell and making them work starts this whole process. It takes those stable, specialized skin cells and erases all the skin functions and reactivates 
enlivens the embryonic functions and turns that skin cell back into a pluripotent embryonic cell. Back it's in really, time, basically. <laughs> it's back in time. I mean, it's like a whole altered universe. I mean, it's really changed the fundamental nature of that cell.